Yeah, met, met Kingsley and lovely man called Gavin Christmas on the driveway. Gavin was um, the maintenance guy along with Otto, the legend. And uh, met them, met Kingsley. Kingsley handed me some keys and said, don't lose the keys, boy. So, which he's been saying to everyone for the last 30 years since I've been there. It's one of his things, don't lose the keys, will you? Don't lose the keys. Um, so he just handed me the keys and then said, off you go, good luck. Gavin took me in the studio and there was um, Simon Dawson, engineer who would become a great mentor, great friend for me. And yeah, so he was there, kind of explained to me just, you know, do this, do that, some basic things I could do, make the team, make the coffee, keep the place tidy, but just sit there, gave me a chair, sit there, take it all in. Any questions, just let me know. And that was it. And uh, yeah, I had these keys to this like amazing studio and I was 16 years of age and it was day one. And I didn't really know what, I didn't even know at that point what my job was. I didn't know <laughs> what I'd got a job as. No one had told me, uh, you know, what, what it was. I was kind of had an idea that it was a tape op stroke, stroke assistant, stroke T-boy. Um, but no one had actually said anything. And uh, yeah. In charge of the keys, Nick. Yeah, I was about, I had the keys. <laughs> keys of the city. And what was the, um, what was the first band that you were working on or who was, what was the first session that you worked on? on that first day so walked in and then, as I said Simon was there and then he introduced me to the producer and immediately I recognised the producer it was a guy called Andy Wallace legendary producer uh, mix engineer I mean he'd just done Nevermind so I, he was kind of legendary at that time and still is but um, yeah so he introduced me to him he introduced me to the band which was a band called Sepultura and I knew all about Sepultura because my best mate at school Stephen Fleetwood was a massive Sepultura fan so I'm thinking, right, here I am, day one. There's Andy Wallace, just then never mind. And there's Sepultura, who I know all about because my best mate is a massive fan of them. Um, and they were brilliant and they were all great. Andy, what a lovely man. He kind of looked after me that session, um, answered loads of questions. And obviously, obviously I was like a sponge and I was nervous as well, but excited. I was, didn't have no fear at that age of 16. Had no idea how records were made or what was going on. But... He took the time with me and was and was brilliant. And the band were great. We had a great summer hanging out with them, went out into town, showed them like a lot of the local pubs and kind of, yeah, they all took me uh, took me into the session and um, had a great time. So at the time, obviously like, this is early 90s, what were, um, what were the average session lengths? What would you be expecting to kind of be doing? Um, or how long would the sessions be? So, so back then... It, it, from you know, talking to Simon, like I was on a month with them guys, and I think they'd been in for a couple of weeks before that. So that kind of six week period seemed to be the norm, really. So bands would book six, mm. maybe eight weeks. Um, they might have done four weeks pre production and rehearsals somewhere else, and then they'd go off to London for a couple of weeks afterwards to mix it. So generally, the sessions about twelve weeks long, with six yeah. to eight weeks of that being in Rockfield or you know somewhere else but yeah and usually start to finish bands would do the whole the whole album there and then go off somewhere else to mix it and that was kind of average that six weeks kind of sessions session lengths we can only dream of now nowadays you do very very few records that you know take take that much time that kind of 12 yeah. week period 